हेलो 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 यस हेलो गुड इवनिंग सीवी गुड इवनिंग माय फ्रेंड आर यू ऑलमोस्ट देम कैन यू कैन यू हियर मी यस आई हियर यू ओके थैंक यू आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी एबल टू टॉक टू यू आई एम आई कुर्नियावन यू कैन कॉल मी मिस्टर आई मिस्टर ई Mm-hmm. I'm from Indonesia. I, I'm one of your fans, but today I'm not sure if I'm still Muslim or agnostic or atheist. But on my ID card, I write an Islam. And on January 22, 2020, I perform pilgrimage Umrah, okay. and my father name is Abdul Rahim. Mm-hmm. So I can still be said to be an Abdul. Right. I hope you don't mind chatting with me. No problem. So, are you a Muslim right now? What are you? I'm, I'm trying to understand what is your situation now. So, are you a Muslim? I don't Muslim? know. I, I don't know myself. Uh, I don't know atheist or Muslim. I I often watch your videos, so I'm not sure about Islam, but I'm not a Christian too. I I don't know. I I think I am an agnostic. I believe in God. So but okay, I don't but, but, but but tell me. Uh, Quran, there is uh, lie on Quran. When the last time? Yes, you tell me. When the last time you you said that you are a Muslim to yourself? When the last time this has happened that you are a Muslim, before you became, uh, let us say, agnostic. Sorry, uh, your son is I mean, not. Yeah, I'm saying when, 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 the, okay. when, when okay. the last time. When the last time. When the last time you the consider last yourself a Muslim? Last time, like as a period of time, two months, three months ago. At this time, I am still a Muslim, but I don't do salat. Oh, so you are? I, you think you are a Muslim? Okay, so let let let, let us me and you try together. Uh, but first, because I, no, first, I, first, I, first I, before I, I, before we continue, because sometimes we want like we want to be sure that we don't receive uh, phony callers, liars. Uh, can you say shahada? Of course. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. So he's a so he's a Muslim. That's I, wonderful. The pillar so, of Islam, hmm. uh, shahada, salat, jihad, hmm. uh, fasting, okay. umrah. I did umrah. Mm. But I don't kiss the black stone. Oh, you miss it, man! You miss it. It smells so good. Oh, why? Mm. Why you didn't kiss it? It mm. smells so good. It's like it's coming even from heaven. How come you didn't kiss it? I had some just thing. Harus berdesak desakan apa ya? It it risks my life. Cause there's many people want to kiss it. I don't want. Cause by waving hand, it's enough. Mm. But I I do a uh, seven time uh, cycling the Kaaba. Okay, but why? But why you touch the? You, you said you said my friend that touching the black stone is enough. Enough for what? Not not touching. Just wave with my with my hand and saying Bismillah, Allah Akbar. That's enough. Okay, well, so enough yeah. for what? Enough for what? To accomplish enough, to yes, accomplish to, what? To rest my sin. Oh. The, so do you think really the, that? Do you think really that? Okay. Do you think really touching my, touching a stone? Hand. Okay. Do you think really touching a stone will erase your sin? Don't you think this is a pagan cult belief? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I'm saying I'm an agnostic or an atheist. Because yes, I am becoming dog with my religion, my Islam. So uh, what? I will try the, to respond your topic today. It's about uh, Haidir and Moses who find Fontaine of Light. Hmm. May I? Sure, sure. But I want to ask you first, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. But is it Please. is it because you are watching my videos you became agnostic, which means you are a Muslim but not sure? Is that my videos or something else? Yes. Oh, okay. All because right. of it, uh, before yes, Mama, uh, I am not sure from I am age uh, high school maybe, uh, but Mama, I am not from a family that uh, Islam yang taat apa itu. Okay, so now, you, so now you, 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 how old are you? If you don't mind to say, I am old enough. I am now forty. Okay, so you're an adult man. No problem. That's wonderful. So, uh, you are watching my video for a while, and that make you now have a doubt about Islam. And you said you went to Hajj or you do Umrah, and you go yes. around the Kaaba and you touch the black stone. And uh, now you want to share with us about the story of Moses and the the, the fountain of youth. What do you yes. know about it? Go ahead. Uh, uh, I think it is miracle. In the past, there's many miracle. 
uh, from sign of life, just like Jesus. Jesus can walk on the water. That's a miracle. Jesus can hmm. pure water becoming wine. That that's miracle. Hmm. I think in the past there's many miracle, and today there is no miracle because I don't know why. Because in Islam, okay. it's believed that God sees a miracle. Stop miracle because people don't believe on miracle today. Yeah, that's on Islam. Yeah, but my friend, yes, maybe, uh, but my friend here, the story. There's no miracle. It's this is a fiction story about a water. If you drink from it, will bring you to life. This is why it's called Ma'ul Hayat. So your God, Allah, is restoring a story. You, you can go and search a story. It's called the story, the, the legend of Al Gilgamesh. This those those uh, uh, old legends exist long before Islam. About a fountain of youth exists in the area of Al Bahrain. This is why here the mission, the mission Al Bahrain. And the Quran mentioned the Bahrain too. So Al Bahrain supposedly is a location where two seas meet, but uh, geography, this is false. There is no two seas meet. But because at that time they are limited in knowledge, so they see two seas from the two sides. So they call it Al Bahrain. And supposedly in that area, there is a magical fountain. Anyone he drink from it, he will come back to life, which means if you have somebody, he's dead, not, not, uh, not alive, he's dead. You let the water touch even his face, he will come back to life. And actually, here we go. The hadith in front of us saying, At the rock there was water spring called Al-Hayat, which means the life. And none come in touch with its water, but became alive. Correct? It says that, right? Yeah. Okay. So here there's yes. no miracle. This yes. is magic. This is magic because this is not Allah making this uh, fountain this is for everybody it exists for everybody supposedly none it says none touch in it will come back to life so it doesn't matter who you touch the fountain okay but if, in this case you are not making people believe in allah you are making people believe in fountain of you that this is god this water may be god there are some people actually enter now they worship water there's people who worship water it's they believe water is god Muhammad was copy paste from bahrain he copied the story which is exists in the in Persia, exists in the uh, for the Sabian, exists for uh, 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 the the east of uh, 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 of Syria. This is a story spread all over about a fountain of youth, and even you can find it in Eastern in Western uh, legions because this this story is spread all over. So now this is why we see it in the the, the movie, which is not long time ago, the part of the Caribbean about many armies, many uh, fighters fighting over what. To find location of the fountain of youth. Yes, what you put forward is logical, makes sense. Yeah. I have watched a lot of video that you made. Uh, it looks like you have thousand video, but I have not found video that satisfy my question about God having a human form. Jesus is a he is a human form from a God. Is that right? Okay, so what? The, so you need you need me to explain to you how that can happen. Maybe. Uh, I, yes, yes. I, I hope you can discuss this about this. Can you please? Sure. Maybe sure. at this time. Okay. Let let time. us. No problem. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm here to help you, my friend, because you are still a Muslim, and for my for me, I am here to serve people like you. I'm your servant today. All right. I am your Thank servant. You. Thank right. you very much. So, I'm very happy. Thank you. You yeah. are very kind. Before I start, I apologize if my English is not good. No, 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 you are, fine. you are, you are fine. English is not my first I'm language too, so don't worry about it. This is it's as long we can I'm communicate. Just, uh, don't worry, as long we can communicate, things is good. So listen. I'm just an ordinary Abdul, not a Sheikh or not like you. You no see, master in many languages, memorize many verses of Quran, Old Testament, New Testament, the Hadith, and the other. You are a genius for me. My friend, I, uh, mem memorizing is not important. Understanding it what make us different because anyone Parut can memorize too. So listen to me. If we say God, okay. the second we say God, we say what? We say He's Almighty, correct? Correct. Okay, what Almighty mean? Almighty, oh, he, he can do anything, but in my opinion, hmm. he can be have a human form because can you open a uh, surat asura 42, surat 42, verse uh, 11? Okay, what about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, but but, but you, you are sure that God has a human form, it's sure. Uh, when when you say yes, does this mean that human are shaped like God? Hmm. 
Well, this verse here, it's the verse saying that there's nothing like Allah, right? But this is a verse exists in the Bible too, where God saying, there's the, the prophet saying nothing like God. But you see, when we say nothing like God, it's not about a look. Because what is making God God is not the look. What make God God that he is almighty, which means there's nothing can there's nothing impossible to God. That what make God God is not a look, right? I think it is impossible God to have a human form because okay. there will become a competitor in his shape. It's oh. illogical that Almighty One has a competitor in hmm. shape. Okay, you see, uh, a human being they keep saying to God, okay, if there is God, why he don't show himself? So it is logical that God, he show himself, he humble himself, and he show himself. It is logical. What you say is not logical. Why? Uh, is that because that will ins be insult to, to Allah if he is God? Yes. Well, no, because yes. because nothing can be an insult to God. I, I will give you an example. When the sun, the yes. sun, the light of the sun, go inside dirty water, that do the sun get dirty? The sun... It can be get dirty because the sun is big and no, no, no. The light of the sun, when the light of the sun go inside the water, which one of them will make the other infected? The sun will make the dirty water clean, correct? Oh, yes, it, uh, becoming rain, it become cloud. No, the sun, when, when the sun go inside, let's just say there's some, there's water, have bacteria, germs, viruses. But when the sun come, everything will be burned, correct? Yes. So correct. the sun, and it is just a sunlight, it's not God. The sun will not be infected by the water of the sewage. It is the opposite. It is the sewage who will become a clean water because of the sun. So God is almighty. If sun can do that, and it's just one of the creation of God. How God, how about God who is the holy, who is everything about his, him is, is holiness? How anything can affect him, nothing can affect God. He is always holy, he is always pure. And now you said something very for me, very important. Did your prophet say that Allah, he have shape and he have a physical body? No. No? God is invisible. God is invisible. No one can see God. All right. God is eternal. Yes, no one. No one can see my God. So if I if I show you. You're a prophet saying that. What you what you will say? Uh, the hadith in front of me. Yeah, I will show you. There's many hadith. You see, I'm looking on screen. All of them they are saying the same. So, if I show you that your prophet saying that Allah, He have shape and images, and He even changes His shape. What you will say? You are a Muslim Sunni, correct? Yes, Indonesia okay. Sunni. Yes. All right. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, so they cannot say and lie to you, says, oh, this is a weak hadith, as usual. Al-Bukhari, hadith number 7439, I'm showing it in the screen. If we go up, we will see Muhammad telling a story about people going to see God. To see who? God. See who? Allah. Okay. Can we see Allah? Muhammad, he said, yes. They ask him, Messenger of Allah, shall we see our Lord in the day of resurrection? He said, do you have the, any difficulty in seeing the sun and the moon when the sky is clear? We said no. He said, so you will have no difficulty of seeing your Lord. So now we are talking about seeing Allah physically, not metaphorically, obviously. He compared him to the sun and the moon and how easy it's going to be to see him. Now how we will see him? If you go down in the story here, Muhammad, he said the following. I read carefully with me. Then the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw the first time. Does it say that? You see the screen? Yes, I see. Okay. You said that Allah cannot be in a shape because when you say he cannot be in a man, you are talking about a shape of a man, correct? Correct. Okay. But here Allah is a change. Not only he have a shape, he have many shape. He, to the point he is a changing his shape and coming in a new shape so if the shape is a creation of Allah how Allah is inside the shape which he's created it's 
it speak about the end the uh, what akhirat uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this is not this is a topic you see the today or now or later that going to change anything allah is taking a new shape obviously correct the timing is not really a big deal i mean in the as long he can do it in judgment day it's mean he can do it now and do it now yes. or do it later doesn't matter allah is inside the shape this shape is created by who by allah okay so allah is inside his creation will come to them in shape other than the one which they saw for sign hmm. yes it's, it's not logical it's not logical hmm. hadith yeah well if Allah it's if contradicts Allah, you with the Quran no 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 it doesn't correct with the Quran no it doesn't correct with the Quran why could with the Quran you see when the Quran says nothing is like Allah uh, well nothing like me too don't you know that every human being is different from every single there's seven billion human being nobody is like you is that correct yes okay so if this no, is the case nothing God, okay. God, God has no shape it should be the, the almighty has not shape has no shape for almighty you have no what you have no what no no shape for, for God no one can see God yes this this hadith seem it contradicts with Quran Quran mm. say God okay. is invisible. God has no shape. God is no, no, no. Uh, you see, no, 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 no. Let me let me share with you some knowledge so you can wake up with me and you can see things in a better way. Do you know the story of Moses when Allah appeared to Moses as a fire? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, well, as a fire, but but the fire is not God. The, fi the, the fire is who? Okay. So, who, so what is the fire then? Is the fire is not God? What is the fire? Because yeah, it's fire. It, it's a mediator. It, no. Uh, no, 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 no. Read, read carefully. With me. God can speak directly to okay. human. Okay. No. God needs mediator okay. to speak. To okay. Him. You know what? I will go with you. Did Allah speak to Adam with the voice of a human? Not as a human, but the appearance as human. God cannot speak directly to human. That need a mediator. He spoke to Moses. Uh, he didn't. He spoke to him, to him, and then he said the, the voice came from the tree, and this and the voice says, "I am Allah." Allah said to Moses, "I am Allah." This is not somebody else speaking. This is not Jibreel. He said, "I am Allah." O Moose, O Moshe, verily I am Allah. Right. So Allah here is using a voice of a human being and the Quran confirmed that. Now, I will go with your logic. Allah is invisible. Allah is not like anyone. Allah is etc. And then Allah, he have a voice of a human being. What do you think? What what is seen is an appearance of, from God, and this appearance is not God. My friend, but this is God. Is you see, does it say does it say I am Allah? He didn't say I am a voice from Allah. Yes. It says I am Allah. Yes. So the voice confirm it is identity. The voice saying because Musa did not see Allah. Correct? You are saying. Yes. Okay. Not but, see so, Allah. so who he is the one saying? Okay, but who is the one saying I am Allah? The voice. So, in this scenario, the only Allah is the voice. Allah became a sound, and sound is energy, and waves. I am Allah, the exalted, the might, the wise. So, Musa, he saw a fire. He came to the fire. He heard a voice from a tree, and the tree is burning. And then the voice says from the tree, from the holy ground, saying, I am Allah. So who, where, is, where was Allah? Allah is unlimited by time and space. He is trying to communicate. By no, 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 no. You have to prove it, my friend. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a theory. Here we go. 
it says blessed is the one who is in the fire and the one who is around the fire who is in, inside the fire the voice of Allah read carefully verse number 8 chapter 27 verse number 8 blessed are those in the fire not those actually the one in the fire and the one around the fire doesn't say those doesn't say singular or many it says bless the one in the fire and the ones are around the fire okay who is the voice speaking saying I am Allah Allah voice Allah saying the voice saying I am Allah so the one is inside the fire is Allah if it's an angel that will be stupid because simply the angel should not say I am Allah he should say I am an angel of Allah but the voice said I am Allah so the one is inside the fire is Allah so now we have your God is inside the fire and fire is a creation of Allah uh, are you the Christian belief that inside the fire is Allah uh, we believe in what no, yeah. we believe in what believe you, you believe that inside the fire Allah I think Christianity believe that for me Allah for me my friend for me true? for me listen listen for me for us as a Christians we believe that God is capable of being as he wish as an example God he appear you know as a, like the Holy Spirit appear as a bird yes it can it can come in, in, in any way he want for his Almighty God for us this is not a problem but for you here we have a lot of contradiction in the understanding of a cult which is contradicting itself and you yourself you just said this hadith contradict the Quran right why? Because you have understanding right. that God should not be inside as a creation. But everything in Islam yes. saying it clearly that Allah is inside as a creation. And Muhammad so and Muhammad is uh, let us let us me and you come to an agreement. Who is the best to understand the nature of Allah? Me or you or Muhammad? I don't know. What do you mean? No, that, you, the answer should be Muhammad. Be, the answer should be Muhammad because he is the prophet who introduced Allah to you and to me, correct? Oh yes. Okay. So, Muhammad so if Muhammad say, so, so if Muhammad say this statement and this is very authentic hadith, which means it's confirmed that he is the one who said that that Allah will come in a shape which he created. And he have more than one shape. Shape number one now, based on this story, shape number one and shape number two. So Muhammad is making it clear that Allah is inside his shape. There's other hadith where Muhammad he said that Allah he come down every third part of the night. Do you know the hadith? Mm, not yet. Maybe right. you can show me. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is a disaster. They cannot say it's weak. Hadith number 1145. All right. Book number 19, Hadith Sorry. number 26. It says, the messenger of Allah said, O oh, oh, our Lord, the blessed, the superior, comes every night down on the nearest heaven to us. When the last third of the night remains. Okay. Allah is coming down where in the lowest heaven how many heaven there is I forgot seven maybe seven okay seven heaven and Allah now is inside the seven heaven because he had to go through all of them to go down to the lowest one isn't it the heaven is the creation of Allah yes that's mean Allah is inside his creation That's why I say I become I mean, agnostic. No, but, but you no, I but you called yourself, my friend. I no, you called yourself a Muslim. Between Hadith, Quran. Yeah, but you said you are a Muslim still. You cannot say I'm agnostic. A second ago, you said still you think you are a Muslim. So Muslim, if you are a Muslim, you should believe in this. And and this is obviously that this man Muhammad, he is making up stories and he is very confused and he is confused confusing you with with, with him. So in one hand, he says yes. to you that Allah is not a, a, a man. But in the other hand, he said, no, Allah is a man. Actually, I can show you Muhammad saying it clearly that Allah is a man. Let me show you this hadith. Well, yeah. Show me, please. No problem. Here we go.
And this is a Sahih Hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. Do you see it says Sahih? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hadith number 4320. We go up. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, the Antichrist, into bracket, that I am afraid that you might not understand that the Antichrist is short, hinted, woolly high aired, one eyed and eye sightless, and neither protruding or deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. What Muhammad is worried about? He is worried that the Muslim they will think that false Messiah is Allah, correct? Correct. So he's comparing between what? Between a man and Allah. Why? Okay, so why the Muslim they will think that the guy who is a man they will think he is Allah? If 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 Muhammad teaching that Allah is nowhere will be a man. This hadith should be to be accurate more that if you if, if uh, uh, I'm afraid you will confuse between him and the real Messiah because remember, Al Masihu Dajjal means the false Messiah, correct? All right. Okay, so he should compare between him and the Messiah, the real Messiah, not him and Allah. Because the guy is not claiming to be Allah, he's, he's calling himself Al Messiah. You know what I mean? Maybe the Lord it's not to God, maybe? No, 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 no. You see, if I am coming, I will, I will make it simple for you. If I am saying, okay, we have a president, his name is Donald Trump, somebody Muslim, he mentioned his name right now, he's angry from him. Let us say I am claiming to be Donald Trump. And then you want to advise me how to recognize the real Donald Trump from the fake Donald Trump. You compare between me and Donald Trump, correct? Correct. But here... The guy is saying he is the false messiah. He is he is not he's saying he is the messiah, but he's false. So he is not saying he's Allah. So why Muhammad is afraid that the look of this man will look the same as Allah, unless Allah is a man. What the difference between the two? The first man and Allah, the false messiah and Allah, one eye only. Do you see it? One eye. He did not say that Allah is taller, no. He did not say Allah is shorter, no. He did not say that hair is different, no. He say only there's one thing different between them, the eye. is not an eye sightless. So one only different between the man, the false messiah, and Allah. That is the eye. This is a clear acceptance from Muhammad. That the one who claimed to be the messiah, immediately he is claiming to be God. Otherwise, why Muhammad is worried that the Muslim, they will think that this is Allah. So here Muhammad, he get himself busted in two things. Claiming to be the Messiah is a claiming to be God. And God, he looked like the Messiah, but there is one difference between them. One eye. But the Messiah have a shape of a man. So Muhammad worry about you believing in him, the false Messiah, as Allah is invalid unless the hadith here is uh, stupid, mad, crazy, made by a crazy man. Because why I want to think that he is Allah if Allah is not a man anyway? I mean, who care about the eye? The guy is a guy. You know what I mean? Do you know that uh, Isa al Masih or Jesus will come back to earth that killed Dajjal? Exactly. So, so that the jail, that the jail, my friend, that the jail is somebody in like uh, uh, he t he t he take the identity of Jesus to deceive people, correct? The jail is. This is why they call him Masih the jail because simply he is taking, he is stealing the identity. He claimed to be the Messiah, right? The jail, yes. He okay. He claimed so, yes to be okay. So he claim he claimed to be the real Messiah. So how in the world? How a Muslim he will think that he is Allah, and the only difference between them is the look. And what is the different? The one eye. So if Allah is not a man, this story here is stupid anyway. Because okay, he is the guy is coming as a Messiah, as a man. So why I will think he is Allah unless Allah is a man too? 
I think mean, uh, the word Lord here is mean Imam Mahdi or the Messiah. No, 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 my friend, my friend, no, 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 no. You see, uh, in Arabic we don't say the word Rabbukum. This is the same word you can find it in the Quran. Al Mahdi is not Rabbukum. Rabb in, Ar in, in Arabic is very clear. Rabb is God. This is an Aramaic oh, Hebrew yeah. word. This is why they say Rabbi. This why they are the teacher of God. Rabbi. Rabbukum. If I take the same word exactly, copy it and post it in the Quran, you will find that the word only come as God, never come as something else. Not like in English, you can find the same word like Lord come sometime for here something. No, in Arabic is that's it. Especially we are talking about comparing between this is a prophet. This is not a, 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 a you know. Uh, somebody speak about uh, the the Lord of the house or the Lord of the slaves or no? Ya ayuhannas, abudu rabbukum aladi khalaqakum. Do you see it? Chapter two, verse number two to one. Chapter two, verse number forty nine. Rabbukum, rabbukum. Here we go. The same all over the Quran. The same word repeated. So here Allah is equal to a man by the look and muhammad is proving it to us now you never heard muslim saying okay but but, but, but this is the muslim sunni agreement both hands are right isn't it my friend this is the muslim sunni believe you are sunni all sunni agree that allah have a hand not only he have yes. a hand he have two hands and both of them in the right side Correct? Yes. Okay. Do Allah do Allah have a foot? Yes. <clears throat> okay. For hand and foot, I have an argument that the hand the hand of the God are different from the hand of the human. The hand of God is ultimately perfect. It has what? no physical form, unlimited by space. In no, God. no, no. Okay. God let us prove. Let us prove. Because the God doesn't have any weakness. Okay. Let us prove. If they, no, 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 no. Look, hold on. Left hand in human My is friend. weaker than My, okay. the left. I can. All right, my this friend. Mean God is ultimately mm. perfect. Okay, my this friend. My when we say, when we say, when we make an argument, we have to sponsor the argument with proofs and reference. Correct. Correct. This is uh, this is Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number seven uh, three seven one. It says, the <coughs> the Prophet said, the people will be thrown into the hell fire, and they it will say, are there more? This the fire will say, are there more to come? Chapter 5, verse number 30. Till Allah puts his foot over it, and it will say, Qati, Qati, which means supposedly enough, enough. So Allah will put his foot. Is that metaphorical foot or this is a physical foot? God like are different from human like. Uh, doesn't matter I'm, I'm not asking you how it man. my friend I'm not asking you how it looked like when it says he put his foot he put his foot where in the hellfire is the hellfire is a physical place I think in the judgment day all are non-physical mm -hmm. in judgment day they are non-physical we are only spirit mm -hmm. there's no physical my friend, isn't it the Quran says Allah will change your skin each time it's burned? What physical? What not physical? What are you talking about? Allah will change your skin to burn you more and more. Each time your skin is burned, He will change it for you. Supposedly, so you can be burned more. Right? Yes, there is many unlogic in in Hadith and Quran. Okay, so there is no so, logic. So, so now, so now, my, my friend. Okay, so when you say there's no logic in the Quran, you are saying to me, well, uh, 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 there's, Islam is, is false. That's what you are saying. Because obviously Allah, like even the Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari says, Allah will uncover his shank, and this is exist in the Quran. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 2940A. Allah, when uh, how the Muslim they will see Allah? Muhammad, he make, he make it clear that he will cover and that one day when the shank would be uncovered. Actually, the same hadith I showed you about Allah coming to them in, in, in his shape is the same hadith saying 
that Allah, when the Muslim they refuse Allah, look what happened. Allah come to them in a shape other than the one they saw first time, which is very weird to say. And then the Muslim they will say to him, "Oh, you are not Allah. Hmm? You are not Allah." Then Allah will come back to them in a shape which they agree with. So the Muslims, they refuse their own God Allah just because he changed his shape. So Muslims are following shape. They are not following God. If the shape is like this, we accept you. If the shape is like that, we don't accept you. So when we go and read, we will find the following. Let me put this, the, the hadith for you. Uh, because this hadith has exists many places. This is very, very strong hadith, you know. It's not, uh, uh, it's not like uh, one time. Okay. Let us see. I mean, look how many hadith to the point. It's hard to find it. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. <clears throat> Always, my friend, remember that when you speak about logic, you should not speak about Islam. Islam, nothing in Islam is logical. Is it logical that God, because you became a Muslim, he will give you endless penis? Is it logical he will give you a lot of women for sex? Is it logical that the wife, her ass is one mile? Is it logical yes, that... That's why I don't believe in... Yeah, in so, 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 so in Islam, the second, the second you, you mention logic, you are just out of Islam. Actually, the word logic is not Islamic. It is kuffar teaching. So you are practicing kuffar right now. Read carefully with me. Allah will come to them in a shape other than they knew, and they will say, I am your Lord. Okay, what they will say? They will say, we seek refuge with Allah from you. So the Muslim will do. They will reject Allah. For what reason? Because he changed his shape. Let me put it for you on the screen. Correct. What yes, happened? This is this funny. is this is Allah. This is not Isa. This is not Musa. This is not Muhammad. This is the same God of Islam, Allah. He just changed his shape. Muslim, they say to him, get lost. What is this telling us that Islam is stupid? Because how we will know the shape of Allah? That this is not the shape of Allah unless you saw Allah uh, first time. When when they saw Allah first time. You know what I mean? In order to know that this is not Allah and to make decision by the shape, well, you should have a scenery, an image, a picture of the real Allah so we can compare. Correct? Yes, it's correct. So the story is just stupid, and Muhammad here is, is, is making a fabrication, getting him busted. And look what he said. Then Allah, nobody will talk to him but the Prophet. They are examining him now. The Prophet, they are testing him. Who is this guy? And then Allah will come to them in a shape which they recognize him. Read carefully. And they, when our Lord come to us, we will recognize him. Okay. They say to him, we will not follow you to Allah. Why? And not only that, they say to him, we seek refuge with Allah from you, which means they call him, you are the devil, you are Satan. The Quran says you seek refuge by Allah from Satan, correct? Yes. So when you say when you say to Allah, we seek refuge to, with Allah from you, that means you Muslims accusing Allah to be Satan just because he changed his shape. And that is alone should make you go to hell because you just call Allah Shaitan. So this is alone is deserved to... Uh, send you to hell and then we need to ask ourselves a question very simple question what is the point of this hide and seek story why Allah changed in his shape coming in the shape of Santa Claus and then he said to them I am Allah and then the Muslim they will say you are not Allah and then Allah he go back to his bedroom and then he changed his shape and he come back to them and then they worship Allah I mean what this story is about 
what is the benefit of this story? I don't know. You tell me. Well, the benefit is that Muhammad is a fool. He make up stories. And now he is saying to us that there is two Allah. Because if the shape of Allah is Allah, and now we have two shape, that means there is two Allah. Because either we have, let me let me try to, to make it simple for you. Uh, okay, let's see here. <clears throat> I will draw something for you so you can understand me. I'm not good in drawing, don't take me wrong. But it, it just to, it, it, it just to help, you know. <laughs> I'm not an artist, or I'm not. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's just a way to make it simple it's for it's for for many people. All right. I'm just trying to find an empty space here. Okay. And here we go. So look with me here. Allah, He come in a shape. It doesn't matter what the shape I would draw. I'm not trying to insult. I'm just trying to make it a shape, whatever. So let's say Allah came as uh, a circle. Forget about the shape of a man. Hmm? Circle. Or he came as a, whatever, you know, a, a, tri a triangle, whatever you want. And then Allah, he went after the Muslim, they saw him. They said to him, we seek refuge by Allah from you. They say to him, you are Satan. Oh, I'm typing in Arabic. You are Shaitan. Why? Because Allah, he come to them in this shape. Then Allah, he go back to his bedroom. And he come in different shape. The Muslims, when they see the shape, they say to him, No doubt, you are Allah. What we learn from this, that it doesn't matter who is Allah, the matter is the shape. Because the first circle, it was Allah anyway. Correct? Okay, so what it changed exactly? Nothing except the shape. So Muhammadan, when you are one of them, you don't follow Allah unless he have a certain shape you like. So when Allah, he come to you in the circle shape, you say to him, get lost. I'm not going to follow you. I follow not the circle. I follow the square. When Allah he come back to you in the shape you approve, then you agree to follow him and to worship him. And this is exactly what Muslims and Muhammad is teaching Muslims to do to Jesus. They don't like the shape of Jesus. They want a shape. They want a God to fit in a shape they like. Even if God himself is God, Still, they will reject him, and I'm, show, I'm showing you the proof of from Islam, not from my Bible. So, Jesus, he come to us in the shape of a man. God, in humble himself, he came in the flesh of a man. So, what we say, we say, it's going to be God, because we don't approve this shape. If the Messiah, if we change here, if we change here the, 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 the position between Allah and the Messiah, you would do exactly the same. So the one here is coming as a circle is Allah. And then Allah is coming as a square. It's the same Allah. Nothing changed. What it changes is the appearance. So Islam is teaching us that we can judge only Allah by appearance. Christianity is totally the opposite. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And that goes to him. How we know the Messiah? If the Messiah come today, the Messiah says he will come in the judgment day. How we will know that this is the Messiah? Very simple. The Messiah, he will do what the Messiah can do. There's a guy, his name is Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He claimed, he claimed to be the Messiah. He came in, in, in India, right? 
So yes. he claimed yes. to be the Messiah. Yeah, he claimed to be the Messiah. And then in the morning, he, he, he found like 200 people who cannot walk, blind people, <laughs> in the front of his house. He said, okay, if you are the Messiah, here we go. Do what the Messiah do. He closed his door and he went to his bedroom and he, he didn't want to see anyone. <laughs> you know, so because he cannot do what the Messiah can do. So the Messiah, he do not need a shape to prove who is he. Otherwise, I can say I'm the Messiah. You can say you are the Messiah. Anyone can do that. But the Messiah, he has many qualifications. Number one, he's holy. So if you are a person who is have a superpower, let us say, for sake of argument, but yet you are not holy. Obviously, you are not the Messiah. His yeah. his holiness, his ethic, his teaching, his amazing, his, his not only his power. All of those things will lead us to know the Messiah. In Islam, no, it doesn't matter the circle is Allah or not. It's not Allah just because it's circle. It doesn't matter the qualification, the quality. Just because he is a square, we accept him as as Allah. And that is telling me that Muhammad is a very shallow man and he is a stupid. Because he did not teach us about how is God. You notice that he compared between the false Messiah and the real Messiah. What the difference? One eye. I mean, how in the world that you can be true? How in the world somebody claiming to be a prophet of God, he says to us, the way you recognize your God that he is not one eye. That is the most stupid argument ever a human being he can come with. I have a good news for you. Allah is not one eye. Okay, thank you very much. Here we go. Now we can find Allah. We look for somebody who have two eyes. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of a of a madness like this? This is how we will know Allah. And the false Messiah now he have one eye, but he, he can wear sunglasses. He can make a surgery. Actually, according to Muhammad, the false Messiah, he can cut a human being two pieces and then he put him together. So the one who can put a human being together, make him alive again, he cannot fix his eye. <laughs> so what do you think? Can we take Muhammad seriously as a prophet or this is a joke? Yes, I think it's just a joke. It's From a joke. beginning when I was young, I at high school, I too complain about Islam uh, that Muhammad has for uh, 12, 13, yeah, 13 wives. Hmm. I don't like people who has many wives. I I prefer a uh, Catholic. It's one wife until death do us apart. Hmm. It's like that. Yeah. I think Christian is more better in marriage. It is more, and I, I say, I almost say that I will leave Islam. It Islam is polygamy, or poly. Uh, when I was young, I say that. I don't know for today. Uh, and when we will talk, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm an agnostic now. Uh, my friend, and I still ask you another you, question. You said you said you said you are a Muslim, Muslim, so you so you are not agnostic. No, uh, no you are not agnostic because I asked you, do you believe in Muhammad? You said yes. I asked you, do you say Shahada? You say yes. So you are a Muslim. Agnostic is just a, you are hiding. You, you know, I, I'm not I'm not trying to insult you. You are hiding behind uh, the word agnostic. You know, but you did say many times that you are a Muslim. So why in the world you just said? that this is a joke islam is a joke so why in the world you are not announcing yourself right now that you are out of islam yes many many unlogic in islam yes like you say the god compared to dajjal to antichrist uh, and and you sure that the lord the word lord is allah is god and you are an arabic you know arabic uh, i don't know much about arabic and you sure that the word Lord is is Allah. It, it's not not logic. Uh, so uh, I decide uh, I'm not a Muslim anymore. Wonderful. So now I, I, you know, as long I'm happy for you that you left Islam. I am happy now to be your servant, extended servant for the rest of the day to help you to accept Jesus. Is that okay with you? That, that's, that's hard for me to, to accept Jesus because I have many questions about Jesus. So uh, maybe from uh, 
from wait a second uh, i need google translate uh, i cannot speak english very well so i this i need help from google translate Yeah, it, it, it is not easy for me to change my religion. Uh, I came from an Islamic family, even though it is, uh, I'm not a devout Muslim, but the vocationary teaching of Christian and Jew are, have been embedded from my childhood. Right. Jew and Christian are like bad or evil. Right. And in majority Muslim country, when I move to other religion, I will be ostracized, discriminated, my brother, my parent will be disappointed. Even my family name can be destroyed. Even though the state of Indonesia has never been converting to other religion, but the social law can be more evil than the state. So it's hard for me. And, and in the other way, uh, I have another question about Christianity. Yeah, but before we go uh, there, be, before we go there, my friend, you just you just agree that Islam is an evil religion, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, because they will destroy your family, they will harm you just because you decide to leave Islam, right? So here we okay. take we take advantage in in this in this uh, definition now, and to make a message for everybody that if Islam is from God, then Islam should teach godly behavior, and that is not exist in Islam. Now, what is your question about Christianity? Go ahead. Uh, number three. Oh, wait a second. Still, I need Google Translate. Oh, but I did not I finish for you. What, I did not finish for you about uh, 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 God can be a, a humor, right? Because uh, I, I want to finish this yes. uh, this idea for you. So, my friend, uh, if God cannot be human, He cannot be God. And I will make it simple. If I go to you to and let us say I am in front of God right now, and God He said to me, uh, "I'm coming to you as a human." The first thing I will refuse is that a human usually cannot be God because he cannot do what God do, correct? Yes. Okay, so what is my rejection? It's not really for the look, but it is his ability. For we knew God by his ability. Okay, God is the creator. Can you create? If you can, you are God. If you cannot, you are a fraud. Right? Right. All books confirm that Jesus creator and Jesus he made miracle of a creation. As an example, when Jesus he gave eyes to the blind man who was born as a blind. That is a creation. That's that's not a surgery. Like I remember once a Muslim uh, uh, they have article saying uh, the reason that Jesus he have those amazing miracle, but at his time the uh, medical was advanced. I mean, what medical? Why Jesus was giving medicine? He gave the blind man a drop in his eyes, say, hey, take it three times. Jesus has spat on the mud. This is a symbolic for a creation. This is how God created Adam, correct? He mixed correct. water with dust. And then he put it in the eyes of the blind man, and the blind man he see. Yes. Jesus, he said to the, uh, uh, the person, uh, who is disabled, he cannot walk, who is born this way, uh, your sin is forgiven. The Jews in their mind, they start asking what kind of a person he can say that, how he can forgive sin. Do you think he's God? Because only God can forgive sin, right? Right. So then Jesus said to them, which one is easier to say to him? And look, he's reading their mind. They did not even say it by mouth. He, re he read their mind. Which one is easier to say your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk and the man carry his bed and walk? So when we speak about Jesus, we are not speaking about God or a man claiming to be God. We are talking about God being a man and he proved it. His holiness for, you know, if always uh, 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 there, is, there is two kind of power in this earth, evil or good. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. The power of good is the power of God. The power of evil is the power of Satan. Jesus, he challenged the Jews. Who of you can prove me a sinner? Nobody can do it. So when Jesus, he have the power, he is sponsoring this power by his holiness. So holiness proving that he is holy 
power proving that he's almighty wisdom proving to us that this is an amazing teacher which is God for no one nobody can teach us better than God and then the life of Jesus proving that he is what he say as an example Jesus says love your enemy do you think don't you think that is this is amazing ethic to teach people to love their enemy this is impossible right I mean we never heard of his in history somebody saying love your enemy that's way beyond man behavior. Man, he seek revenge. The Quran, all of it teaching about revenge, go and kill them, and etc. You know, even people who did not harm you, go and kill them. So when Jesus says, "Love your enemy," he accomplish the love of God and earth, and he did not ask for anything for himself. He never asked for money. He never asked for women. All cult leaders, they share the same thing. They want your money and they want your woman. So the life of Jesus, even in the cross, Jesus says, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. Here we notice that Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, not only he is saying to Christians, forgive, love your enemy, he did it even in the cross. Imagine, my friend, you are in the cross and there's people they are putting nails in your in, in your hands in your feet they are throwing rocks at you they are humiliating you they are making fun of you and what you what you are thinking about forgive them father they do not know what they are doing can we find better loving god than this god what do you think no. <laughs> yeah in in islam there is a uh... To, in order to atone sin, don't need to sacrifice from the sinless, according to Surat Al-Isra 15. Uh, Surah 17, Al-Isra, uh, Ayat, verses 15. Mm -hmm. So that's why I can receive Jesus, because too many doctrine in, in my brain that Christian is like this, like that. So it, it is okay, I still ask you a question. No problem, sure. I, 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 I told you, my friend, today I am your servant. No, thank you. You are so kind. Yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, please open uh, Quran, okay. Surah 17. Yeah. Al Isra 15. Okay, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I, I just read the conclusion from that uh, ayat, from that surat, uh, that everyone is responsible for his action. And this ayat is, ah, this, okay, I can see. Uh, this is, yeah, this conclusion, sin cannot be given to another. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, what that the question? Be the and I see Angel, I uh, see the Old Testament too, it's, it's same like ayat that, that Surat al Isra. Hmm. Can you open? No problem, you don't need to open, I know what the Bible says, my friend. Uh, maybe, so, maybe you, you can... Okay. You can Okay. Uh, translate uh, for me what what you you the right. uh, the lesson from these verses. Okay. Do you agree with me that My the conclusion is everyone is responsible for his action? Do you okay. agree with that? That ayat that. I agree. The conclusion from this ayat. I agree. And who said to you that the Christians will not pay for their sin? Who said that to you? Uh, someone say that no. if we believe Jesus in no no. You see, the Bible says it clearly. The Lord, he said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. Which means not only you will be pay you for your sin, you will go to hell. You see, we are not we are not hypocrites like Muhammad, who you say shahada and you go to heaven. Actually, what you are saying is in Islam, not in our belief. Because when we say that Jesus, he paid for our sin, that is about God forgiving our sin. And then we repent. This is not about that somebody else will pay for your sin. And when we say that Jesus, he paid for our sin, it doesn't mean really that Jesus, he, he made a payment. It's mean that Jesus, because he loves us, he come to this earth. 
and even though he knew that the Jews will kill him, still he do come. And this is why we say he pay for our sin. For killing Jesus is sin. Insulting Jesus is sin. Stoning Jesus is sin. Crucifying Jesus is sin. So because of sin, he died. So he paid for our sin. Which means it's our sin and he have no guilt, yet we killed him. Do you understand? It's like taking so, somebody, taking somebody to jail for a crime he did not do. So, who is the one who did commit killing against Jesus? Is it uh, God? No, it is the man. So, what you are saying to me? Why they killed him? As if you are saying, "Oh, Jesus, he called the Jew. He says, Jews, come and kill me. I like you to kill me.'" No, that's not what happened. The Messiah, he knew that this is what happened. Still, yet because he loves us. He did not hesitate to give his life, to pay for our sin. So the sin of a man killed him. But doesn't mean that Jesus is a practicing the opposite of what everyone uh, uh, we believe, that everyone shall pay for his sin. This is not what happened. Jesus, by his death and by his coming, he gave us the opportunity that our sin is there, still there. It's not gone. Even if God, he forgive you, your sin is still there. You commit your sin, the sin is going to be there. But because you believe in Jesus, you have opportunity to repent and to go to heaven. And this is what it's mean that he paid for our sin. Otherwise, our sin is there and we shall pay for it unless we repent and we go to heaven. And here they see the hypocrisy of, the, of, of Islam. Don't Muslim, they say that if you repent, you go to heaven. They say, Astaghfirullah, right? You know, Astaghfirullah is secret of forgiveness from Allah. All right? Okay. So you go to heaven if you repent. But, well, Jesus, he is not saying if you don't repent, you go to heaven. He never said that. He never said, actually, go break all the command of God and go to heaven. He never said that. That's why he's saying, not everyone says to me, God, God will go to heaven, but the one who do my father will. And what my father will, don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal, don't lie. All the commandment. So if you break them, you don't go to heaven. So they give you wrong understanding. And now as long as you mention this, let me show you the hypocrisy of Muhammad and the hypocrisy of the cult of Islam. It is Islam who practice putting the sin of others on someone else. Read this hadith with me. Let me find it for you. <clears throat> According to Muhammad, that in the judgment day, Allah will take all the sin of Muslims and he will put it in the Christians. Do you see the hadith? Yes, I see it. Okay, it says here, there would come people among the Muslims on the day of resurrection, which with as heavy sins as mountains not like it's not just normal sin it's as mountains and allah would forgive them and he would place in their stead the jews and the christians so the liar muhammad he says something in the morning in the quran he said the opposite in the hadith because you just said to me that a person should not pay for the sin of others Correct? Correct. So how the Muslim commit sin and we pay for it? So this is a this is this is this is the the, the filthy teaching of uh, Jesus did not say nowhere that G God he said in the Bible that I'm going to you sin go go have go have fun go uh, fornicate go kill, go steal, go lie, and then don't worry, I will take the sin you do and put it on the, in, the, in the Hindus or in the Muslims. That is Islam, my friend. So look at the hypocrisy of those who teach Islam. They say to you that the Christian believe in that, but the fact Islam believe in that, not us. Right? Yes, it's correct. Okay, so what we will do now? What do you think? If there's anything you want me so, to, to ask me? Uh, 
So believing in Jesus die in the cross to redeem our sin is not enough to enter heaven. Absolutely not, because believing without mm. being truthful, you see, when I say believing, what is that? What believing mean? Let us let us study the word believing. Believing alone, it can be a reason to go to heaven if your belief is true. What does that mean? Okay, I believe that uh, I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to sell drugs. Obviously, I'm not a believer, correct? Okay, I believe that in Jesus, but I'm going to do prostitution. Well, obviously, I'm not a believer because Jesus says, if you do such a thing, you will go to hell. So, if you believe in Jesus, you will give the fruit of Jesus. So, your belief will save you, but if you believe, is it truthful only? And how we knew it's truthful, Jesus said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So, a true believer have a fruit. It's not the fruit will save you, it's your belief. But at the end of the day, you have a fruit. And those fruits will prove who you are. So one day when you stand in front of the Lord, the Messiah, in the judgment day, he will say, okay, your name is a Christian prince. Oh, you claim to be a Christian. Oh, you have a cross in your neck. That's wonderful. Okay. And you believe that I'm God. You say, yes, sir, my Lord, yes, I believe in you. That's God. And then he says to me, well, if you are believing in me as God, why you don't do what I told you to do? Go to hell. Or he will say, well, your name is a Christian prince and you did what I told you to do. Go to heaven. So, not only you believe, you know, you believe and you prove it. Otherwise, the Bible says, faith without fruits is a dead faith, which means it's fake. Imagine you have a person in front of your door dying from hunger and you have faith, praying to God, God feed him, God feed him, you know, I'm a good Christian. No, good Christian, he do what Christ did. You help the person and pray to God to help him too. If you don't do that, you are a fake Christian. So your faith can, can save you if it's a true faith. And true faith is the one come with the fruits. So when we say we are saved by Jesus, this is true. Why? We believe in him and he granted us heaven if we believe. But the true belief we are talking about, not a fake fraud belief. For someone who he say he is a believer, but he act as the devil. That doesn't work with Jesus. That work with Muhammad. Even Muhammad, he says, uh, if you ask Allah 100 times for paradise, Allah will give you paradise. Like, what the heck is that? That's it. Or as you said to me, you touch the black stone and Allah erase your sin. How easy it is. Is it right to erase the sin of a, of a man because he's a touch a stone? What if he's a filthy criminal? And he would do it again. Every year I will go. I will kill all people around me. I will, I will rape women. I will steal. I will do drugs. And then I go to the black stone, touch it. My sin is gone. <laughs> right? Yes, that's not logic. Not only Thank not logic, it's, it's very logic. Can it's, I ask you another question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, can God doing slide the sin of chain? Can what? Can God doing the slide the sin of chain? Can God do chain? Chain? What yes, chain? Maybe what, what do you mean chain? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, well, can you open James? James chapter 1 verses 17 is a Bible okay. in James 1 in you this say? Bible, James chapter 1 uh, verses 17 okay what about this it? is written here that God cannot change so the God who is invisible cannot change to Jesus who is visible that's what, what I think, or maybe you can translate to me. Okay, my friend, my, my, but my friend, yes. God, no, you see, uh, when we talk about God or the nature of God, we are not talking about God. Uh, uh, he is like uh, a concrete. We don't, we don't worship idols. God, our Lord, he don't change. He is eternal. That is the change of his nature as holy. God never change. Human, they do change. I change, you change. 
like either we go worse or we go better but God never changed so here you see even in the Old Testament God he appeared to Abraham as a man so God did not change actually if you go in the in Muhammad he copy a verse from the from the Bible that God he created Adam in his image God what created Adam let me pull the verse so when God he created Adam he created him in his image And Muhammad, he said the same. Let me show you. And here you see Muhammad is trying to copy from the Old Testament. Read carefully. Allah Prophet, this is Sahih Bukhari. Allah created Adam in his picture. Okay. He created him in his picture. What picture? The Muslim, they say to you today, oh, no, 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 no. Allah is saying that he created uh, Adam uh, simply like the way he is. But you don't know the way he is. What the, what, what the point of this? If this is what is, I mean, the, the way his face is. We, we don't, do you know the face of Adam? Did you see the face of Adam? We did not see it. The verse is coming from the Old Testament that God, he created Adam in the image of God. And that is the image of Jesus the Christ. So this is from the beginning. This is not something changed. This is not a change. The image of Adam is the image of a Christ. For Jesus said it clearly, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. Nothing exists, nothing exists by, but by me, you know. Um, uh, the, everything created by him and for him. So Adam, when he was created, he created by the image of God. And this is why your prophet, let's see, my ex, your ex-prophet now, he forbid people from beating a person in his face. You can beat him everywhere, not face. Not face. Why? Because simply he's stealing that from the Jews. For the Jews believe that Adam have the image of God. What do you think? So you said God never changed, but when God invisible, God before Jesus come to the earth, it was invisible. No one can see God, but when come down to earth, born in earth, everyone can see Jesus, can see God. Is, is this a change or not? This is not a change, my yes. friend, because the name, but, 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 because this the change is if God he changed the way he judge us, the way he teach us, his ethic, uh, uh, if he uh, uh, you know his existence, but a change of a of a look. This is this is not nothing to do of uh, of uh, of God changing. And yes, as you see from the beginning, God he have created Adam in his image, so there's no change happen. Number one. Number two, even if that happened, that will not be changed because simply, if God, he came to me as a man, yet still he is the same God. He is taking the flesh of a human being, but he is God. God don't change. The same as the light. You know, the light is light. It doesn't matter what the color is. If you, if you, the, the same sun, sun uh, uh, come to your room, if you put some plastic in your window, some like plastic, like whatever plastic, you will see then, you will see inside your room, you will see colors, right? Yes. Okay. I see color. So when you, when you do that, when you do this color thing, uh, is it the same sun is coming or this is different sun? It's the same sun. Mm. Right? Right, it's the same. Yeah, but we see more colors now. But did, did, did any change happen? Nothing changed. It's our ability now changed to see what the white color contained. It was only white color before. We, didn't, we, we were not able to see what is inside the white color. So if God, he show us more of his power, 
that is not about God changing. That is about God showing his power, his ability to do what nobody can do. You know what I mean? Yes, I see, I see. Your, your answer is very logic. I can accept the answer. It's magnificent. You are a genius. But if you're not tired, can I ask you another another question? I told you, and I, I keep my promise, my friend. I am your servant for today. You are very great. This is maybe a question that always attacking Christian in my country. There's a Christian too. They are always attacking by Islam. There. Uh, this question is when God in human form God becoming weak it's evident when the human form of Jesus died in the cross God mm -hmm. will be not crucified by, by human God is supposed to be almighty cannot be killed by human mm -hmm. instead weak and humiliated it is logic that God cannot refuse his uh, penyaliban uh, is crucified God should be powerful to reject, uh, crucify. Hmm. Maybe you have an answer for that. Okay. First of all, let us let us understand what weak means. You are talking about a person who is physically weak, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, and then we are speaking about Jesus being killed, correct? Correct. Okay. So let us think about it. Jesus, the weak. His weakness was because of he is inside of a flesh of a human being, correct? The flesh of a human yes, get weak. Right. But isn't it the same Jesus, the weak, is the same one who came back from death? I don't know. Well, he is. He came. Me? It's what we are Christian. We believe in his resurrection, right? So, yes. his weakness, because simply Jesus said, Nobody can take myself from me, but I lay down myself. So Jesus humbly, he is accepting the weakness and the death even, so he can show us that even death cannot take me. Even grave cannot contain me. Even the devil cannot destroy me. Even the evil of death, of killing me, will not stop me from coming back to you. So look what Jesus did. Amazingly, the weakness of the man, which we are talking about, became a strength when it is come to Jesus. He proved to us that he is God, even in the flesh. Because many people like you refusing Jesus, why? Because of the flesh and the weakness, right? So Jesus, he yes. just showed us actually, because this will be a problem later, if Jesus did not come, if okay, Jesus come as a man, and then Jesus the man, yet he cannot do what Jesus the God can do. So he was he, he was killed, and that's it. It's over. No. The weakness in the flesh, just because the one who is in the flesh is God, became a strength in our eyes. That became a miracle. So we say how he was resurrected, how he came back to life. So the weakness, my friend, it was additional proof that God is a glory. Jesus, with the weakness of a man, yet he was not tempted by women. He have a flesh of a man, correct? Correct. Okay, the flesh of a man, it's mean he have all the needs of the man. So money, women, uh, food. I mean, all of those things will tempt a man. But Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he was holy. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he overcome death. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he made the blind see. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he walked in the water. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he made the one who cannot walk, walk. Jesus, in the flesh of the man, he resurrected the death from the death. So how that can stop Jesus from being God? Never stop him from being God. He is in the flesh, yet he can do what God can do. And he did. Did I answer you? Good, good answer. Uh, 
another question maybe yeah but uh, is, before we, we jump uh, from this one just uh, uh, i'm still confused yeah no problem but well, you, before we go to the okay. second answer i want you to focus with me please and imagine always when you want to understand the messiah close your eyes and imagine we have a, in the front of us right now the messiah i wish i can see him i wish and imagine now we have a blind man let us say i'm sitting in my window here and then there is a person his name is the messiah and there is a blind man he cannot see and next to the blind man there's a dead man and next to the dead man there is a man who cannot walk and next to the man who cannot walk there's a woman she is bleeding and next to the woman she is bleeding there's a sinner and next to the sinner there is a, 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 a person who uh, 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 sick with leper and uh, another the other person there's millions of people are sick and then Jesus he said to them heal and all those people are healed the one who's dead he come from the grave the woman who's bleeding she is not bleeding no more the one who's blind he can see and the one who cannot walk he's walking so the flesh of Jesus he solved all our weakness so look at this the weak Jesus as many they try to call him overcome all weakness we have our disability our blindness our death our hunger our he feel thousands of people so the weakness of Jesus was a superpower proving to us that God is a glorious no matter how he come to us as a man or as God as he is it doesn't change anything so God don't change for God is almighty it doesn't matter how and where he is and that is a clear proof that Jesus is God for if Jesus is not God he will not be able to do what those things he did that will be weakness do you understand me yes i understand you god is almighty yes yes it's logic logic what you have said to me he do my miracle but i can still accept this uh jesus is born isn't it is uh die in the cross human are god creation human experience birth and death Jesus experienced birth and death. This means Jesus is God creation too. Uh, I want to ask a question. Is Jesus God creation or Jesus or... My, my friend, yes, my friend. Okay. okay, let us let us think about it this way. Jesus is not a creation of God for he is God. What Jesus is, is God in the flesh. Simply the flesh is a creation of God. But... The Messiah is God himself. So when we say, okay, uh, the flesh, the flesh of a man is a flesh. That is a creation of God. So God himself is exist. If, if I say to you now, I, I, I will help you. You should ask me, okay, well, before Jesus became the Messiah, the man, where he was? Shouldn't you ask me this question? And that will solve the problem. What do you think? That's the question is the place of Jesus is God or no? Yeah, but be before before we know, okay, because if God is exist before the birth of Jesus, so Jesus should be exist before the birth of Jesus, correct? Correct. Okay. Did Jesus say that? Yes. If you go to John chapter 8 and you read, you will see that Jesus he said clearly before Abraham I am. Before Abraham, I am. Let me play the sound for you so everybody can hear it. And I will try to pray, not all the things, so to make it short. John 8. Let us move a little bit here. World, what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been this is not what abraham did you are doing what your father did they said to him we were not born of sexual immorality we have one father even god jesus said to them if god were your father he would love me for i came from god and i am here i came not of my own accord but he sent me why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. 
He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. Do you hear me, my friend, or you don't hear? And the father of lies. Yes, I but hear you. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me so of sin? Jesus if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Uh, I, uh, I, mean, I, mean, do you, hears, I mean, do you hear the Bible? I'm playing the Bible. Do you hear it or you don't hear it? Oh, no. Uh, I uh, only see... Oh, you don't hear it. Uh, okay, okay. Seats. All right. Okay, let me, only... let, me, let me do this then. Give me a second, please. Okay, sorry for that. The words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you yeah, are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. All right. Did Jesus say before Abraham I am, my friend? Did you hear it? Yes, yes okay. I hear it. Okay, so the existence of Jesus have nothing to do with the existence of the flesh of the man. Correct? Mm. Correct, correct. So he is exists before Abraham. And even the Jews, they said to him, what are you talking about? You are not 50 years old. How he can be exist before Abraham? This is this is, this is crazy. He is he's, he's young, and there is what a thousand of years before between you and uh, and 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 Abraham, well, hundreds of years. So how you can be exist before Abraham? He says, "The truly, truly, I say to you that Abraham not only um, exists before before Abraham I am, and he rejoiced my days. He saw me. So before Abraham he was exist. Who was before Abraham? There was Adam, Noah. Before Adam he was exist. So the existence of my friend of the Messiah have nothing to do with his birth. And the Messiah, he confirmed that. And here, by the way, you will see an answer for something you said to me before. Because he said, the one who follow my words. Correct? Correct. All right. So the one who follow my words, the one who do my teaching is the one who will be saved. Not the one who say Shahada. Did you notice? Yes. Because nice. many Muslims, they lie about Christianity. They say, oh, Christians believe that because they believe in Jesus, they can go uh, uh, sleep around, fornicate, uh, kill, do drugs, sell drugs, uh, do prostitution. And that said, Jesus, he saved them. That's absolutely a lie. The one who do follow my words, my teaching, will never see death what death we are talking about this is that the, the there's the, the eternal life and there is hell so when you follow jesus you will never see death and he's not talking about the death we will have now this is about the eternal life so everything jesus speak of is a proving that he is god and his existence have nothing to do with his birth so before abraham he was before mary she was exist he was exist are you getting my point? Yes, I get you the point. So Mary is the mother of Jesus by birth, but Jesus is exist before Mary. He just took the flesh of a, of a human being because the Messiah are waiting for the Messiah to be born of the Jews. As simple as that. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your explanation. It's... 
in Indonesia it's luar biasa it's very very good but the last question maybe I want to know uh, about Christianity in Islam we uh, to enter Islam we say sahada in Christianity the first we do accept when Jesus Christ as a savior believing him in the cross and then the next after that what should I do uh, every Monday to every Sunday to well first first uh, let me let me see do you do you accept the Messiah as your savior then we can talk about what is next do you accept him as your savior <laughs> I don't I don't know uh, I don't know why you don't know I mean do you have a better name to follow do you have a better holiness to follow do you have a better ethic to learn from do you have a better wise person to listen to do you have a, 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 a glorious uh, uh, name that is better his name there so there's no there's no other uh, so it's up to you but for me I take a you know take the opportunity and invite you to accept the Messiah as your Savior and if you accept then we will talk about what we would do next for me I believe that you see your soul it might be taken from you any second my friend you and me we never know I might not finish even my sentence do we agree we it can we can die easy. as I say before it's not easy for me to change my religion I'm not asking uh, you to change your religion no 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 I, I you know the religion is gone already you, you 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 left Islam what religion you left Islam didn't you I don't know I am an agnostic maybe I'm no no you Islam. said you, you, you my friend I want to learn my friend uh, my friend you said but you said I'm, you said uh, I am out of Islam I left Islam Islam is not logical I'm out of Islam you said that already right yes okay so you are out of Islam so changing religion is not, is not going to be a matter now I'm not asking you to change religion Jesus is not a religion Jesus is God religion is the man made created God is not a created by man so I'm asking you to follow the true God the Messiah his holiness is amazing and he proved what he say what is missing in the Messiah to be God you know, when somebody says that God, Allah, supposedly, he gave the Messiah all those miracles, but obviously those miracles made us believe that he is God, not the opposite. So Allah, if he is God, he's stupid. Because if you did not make the Messiah able to make the dead come back from life, I will not believe he's God. If you cannot make the, the heal the sick, heal the blind, heal the, the one who cannot walk, I will not believe he's God. If you cannot read my mind, I will not believe his God. So all those things Jesus he have made me believe that he is God. And actually he confirmed that by his own statement. So what is making you wait to accept the Messiah as your Lord after you already you left Islam? You know, you told me you left Islam maybe 40 minutes ago already. We agree about that. <laughs> I just want to know... Uh people come to Islam because uh, how to worship God is more better some, some say Islam is more better in how doing it, okay explain to me I'm listening. Here we go. how it's better to how how it's more better to worship God in Islam it, uh, how I learn from it. five time prayer in other religion there is no five time prayer uh, before prayer you have to clean yourself doing a wudu hmm. uh, uh, so uh, I want to know. No, first of all, first of all, this is all. This is all is copied from other belief, including the Jews. The Jews, they are they they are people. They have to be clean before they pray. They have to be pure. Secondly, who said they don't pray five and even more times? Jesus said, if you want to pray, Islam teach you to be hypocrite, because Islam. When you want to pray, everybody will know. But Muslims, they open the windows, they will go to the mosque, they dress certain certain way, and then all of this to show that they are praying. Look what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six, verse number five. And when you pray, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Why the hypocrite? How, how the hypocrite they pray? Listen carefully. Muhammad, Jesus, the Messiah, now is speaking about Muhammad specifically, which is resembling the Jews. And when you pray, you shall not pray like the hypocrite. Are they for they love the pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street? This is what Muslims do. That they might be seen. Verily I say unto you, they have their own reward. So the Messiah is saying that the one who stands in the corner, so do you know, do you know why the corner? So people they can see you from two streets. You know what I mean? 
the corner is yeah because you want everybody to see I am a believer this is what the Muslim do so Islam prayer is a is a prayer of hypocrisy first of all you are repeating a prayer you don't even pray you are reciting Quran but when is your prayer you don't have one yeah. the Messiah said be a person who go to his closet close your door and pray to your father in your closet your closet here is your private room you know a closed doors place so we Christians we pray and even we pray more way more than Muslims and not only five times we pray a hundred of times each time I, you know a Christian if he if he, he feel he feel like he want to communicate with the Lord he's welcome to do so so saying you can you have to call Allah certain time in certain uh, 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 like timing in the day Repeating the same word is the most stupid thing. And then, you know, I, I want you to, to uh, forgive me, please. I'm not trying to make fun, but I will, I will, I will do Zach and Naik now. Zach and Naik, he called Allah five times a day. Allah, he left up the handphone. He did not even answer. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالي يوم الدين يا كلام الدين يا كلام الدين أدينا تنادى المتكين تنادى لنا نبدأ 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 Five times a day, if even if you have a son is calling you five times a day, saying the same stupid word, you will change your phone number. So this is not a prayer. Even Muslims agree that this is an obligation. Correct? Correct. Okay. As long as it's an obligation, it is not a prayer. Because prayer should not be an obligation. It should be something coming from your heart. You pray to the Lord for you love to, not because you have to. So the Messiah, he teach us that you pray to the Lord in your private, from your heart, when you want, as you wish. Secondly, about cleaning yourself before you pray. Well, let us see how Muhammad, he clean himself before he pray. Shall we? Muhammad, he takes shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. And then he prayed to Allah. Do you know that? Yes, I know. Okay. So what Muhammad taught you about cleaning yourself is a garbage. For himself, he was taking wudu with women of blood from period. At that time, women, they have fabric. You know, actually not long time ago, women, they used to do that. And they put it in their private part when they have their period. And then they throw it away. After some time, they wash it many times. And then it became so uh, bad. Uh, the smell is so disgusting. And then when they have their last menstruation, they throw it. It's not used no more. And they throw it in, the, in, in, in that water. So what Muhammad do? He take perform wudu. Do you, do, you see, do you see the hadith in front of you on the screen? Yes, I see. Okay. Do you perform wudu? from the well into which the body of dogs menstrual rags and garbage are thrown he said water is a pure and not made pure and pure by anything so this is the ethic of muhammad he taught you to be pure look what jesus said and you tell me which one is logical jesus said it's what come from your mouth make you dirty not what come, what go inside your mouth. Which one is more logical for you? Can I see the hadith here, uh, Sahih, or? Oh, we can uh, show Hassan, it to you in many form. Uh, here it says uh, here, here it says Hassan. But let me show you the other ones. No problem. Uh, yeah. No, I will show you. No, I will show you. Yeah, it, okay. No problem. Here we go. You see, oh, I will show you many hadith, as many as you wish. Here we go. This, does it say Sahih? Do you see it? It says Sahih, right? Sahih, right? <laughs> it is Sahih. Yeah, it's Sahih. Yes, sahih. And look, here the Hadith saying, I heard the people ask the Prophet of Allah, water is brought to you from the well of Bida'ah. 
is it in that will which dead dogs menstrual clothes an experiment of people are thrown in the the prophet replied saying water is a pure and nothing be filled by anything so you are not praying to you know here we go your your best example muhammad he was showering with do dead dogs blood women blood from period how that can make him clean so the idea my friend of a cleanliness in islam is a stupid idea for islam muhammad never was a clean muhammad was full of lies and again it is not okay if i am a homeless person i have my beard became so long my hair is so dirty my clothes is so stinky i smell like garbage from a mile away but i never hurt a human being i believe in god i pray to god in my heart and there's a person who pray to allah five times a day he's so clean he have perfume but he pray hoping for the death of others Oh Allah, kill the Christians and the Jews. Oh Allah, destroy China. Oh Allah, kill the Hindus. Oh Allah, which one is better? The homeless, the dirty, who never harm, never wish death to others, who pray to God for everybody, or the one who is so clean, he have perfume, he drive Mercedes Benz, but when he go inside the morgue, he start cursing and calling each nations who don't believe in Islam to be killed. Which one for you is more uh, clean? Christian. So why we are saying that Islam teach better way to pray? That's not true. Yeah, that's just true. It's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. What else? Uh, are there rule in Christianity that we, before we pray we must take a bath or clean uh, physically? You know, when my friend, pray, my friend, the, the Old Testament. You can go right now. You can go uh, go in the old uh, in the old, uh, right now. Go to Google, search the Bible verses about cleaning yourself. You will find endless. So this this is not a question. The Jews are very very conservative when it comes to cleaning. Nobody, nobody. The Jews, even actually, if somebody, they want to go to a restaurant, Orthodox Jews, you have to bring them the dish inside the dish. Why? Because if you are touching the dish, they will you will eat and they will not accept it. So the waiter, because he is not a Jew like them, he have to touch the dish from outside. And this is their own understanding. But Jesus, he confirmed that they are wrong in this because it's not what come in your mouth will make you dirty. It was go out from your mouth. So... There is, there is teaching about cleaning your body and God, he don't care really for a cleaning unless it is just for your health. Otherwise, God, he don't care really how clean you are because it doesn't matter how you clean yourself, you are dirty. But let me make it simple for you. If I go to the shower right now and I shower myself for 10 hours and come back, am I really clean? No, because inside me there is food and there is uh, poo poo, <laughs> correct? <laughs> okay, so I'm not a clean really. So what the, what the, what that difference will make to God? I will never be clean. Nothing can make me clean. The only cleaning can make a difference for God is my heart. <clears throat> yes, I see. That, that's good of Christianity. Yeah. So so you being a clean is is uh, like is, is somebody lying to himself that I am a clean. You are not. What God cares for is your fruit. That's why Jesus said, from their fruits, you know them, not from their smell. <laughs> you know? So, yes. the smell does not make any difference. You can smell whatever you are. And, you know, for sure, we uh, actually, uh, Muhammad, he, as you see, he showered himself with dogs and that, 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 uh, uh, dogs and women blood from period. Uh, uh, Christians, like, do you see Christians around you, they are stinky? <laughs> no. I mean, what does that mean? Muhammad, he used to clean his ass by three rocks. And this is not a clean. <laughs> we can show the hadith right now, you know. Where is the cleaning? <laughs> so when they clean, you know, it's claiming that I am a cleaner than others. First, this is, this is very disgusting uh, supremacy. You think you are better than others. For me, it doesn't matter really if a Muslim, he did not take a shower for a year or he take a shower every day. That will not make him a good person for me. What making a good person is, how much loving, how much giving, how much peaceful, how much unharmful he is, not about how much shower he take. 
The shower is his, his personal life. This is for his health. But his behavior is going to affect me, not his shower. So in Christianity, when woman in her period, they can pray too. You can pray in any way. I mean, you're, you're God, the God who created you. The sky is open for us always. There's no timing. There's no place. You can pray to the Lord any time you want. You know, I, I, I remember I remember a Muslim, he said, to, uh, he called the sheikh in the TV. He said to him, can I take the Quran with me to the bathroom? The sheikh, he said, Auzu billah, Auzu billah, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. Like, what happened, man? What happened? As, as, as if the guy who committed a crime. So what if it's in the bathroom? Bathroom these days, actually, they are cleaner than the, than the saloon of, of, of your prophet in the old days. Our bathroom now, they are shiny. They smell so good. What are you talking? So what the problem? And then he said to him, okay, I cannot take the Quran uh, with me uh, to the bathroom because this is not right. So what about my head? I recited many verses of the Quran in my head. Should I leave my head outside? This is the stupidity of this cult. They focus in stuff which is uh, silly and they avoid thinking about the important. The important is, do you pray for good for others or you are praying for evil? Islam focus and praying for evil. You know that the Quran says Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians, correct? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Is that a prayer you pray? I mean, are you going to be proud? Okay, here we go. You take a shower five times a day. Actually, the wudu is not a shower. Still, you are dirty. Because putting some water <laughs> under your arm, some water in your hand, never clean you. I mean, what about the rest of your body? You are still dirty. But let us go with this. Let us say you take the whole shower. But then when you pray to Allah, you recite, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. And you rejoice for that. I mean, this is the devil. This is the devil. Allah is putting hatred between the Christians and you as a Muslim, you will rejoice for the amazing ethic of Allah. That he is a playing the devil. He is the devil. Who is the one who get the benefit of spreading hatred in any society? Be honest with me. God or the devil? Devil. Okay. So Jesus said, I came to the sick, not to the healthy. That makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. Let us say Christians are wrong. Let us say they are even sick. Shouldn't God of Islam say, I came to save the sick, those Christians, they need my help? Correct? Yes. This is it's what should happen. If, like yeah, if this God is a truthful, he should say, those people are lost. I'm here to help them. This is what Jesus said. I came for the sick, not for the healthy. If somebody believe in the true God, he do not need me. Why want to come for him? Right? If some right. imagine somebody have corona and somebody don't have corona, and then God he come to the one who don't have corona to save him. This is the most stupid cult ever. In the top of that, no, <laughs> not only he will not he will he will not save the one who have corona, he will send him corona. And that is Quran. Quran virus. Muslim, they go inside the mosque, their, their faces are nice, they are relaxed, they come from the mosque, they are like, you know, coming from the grave, angry, upset, they want to kill everybody. Takbir, Allah Akbar. The peace disappear from their face. You listen to Jesus, you relax, you love everybody, you pray for the Muslim, you pray for the Hindus. I never saw one Christian praying for the death of Muslims or Hindus or Buddhas or anyone. We pray. You can go to any church. You will see the church is praying for everybody in the world. That is God, my friend. Yes, the true God like that. Exactly. So why you don't accept the true God, the Messiah? <laughs> I don't know. Why you don't know, my friend? Be brave, be brave. The Lord, the Messiah, is giving you opportunity today using me to talk to you inviting you to accept the messiah so why you are hesitating i am a slow thinker maybe uh, can i ask you another question or i must you will be you will be i i, I made a promise i am your servant for today 
it is uh, in Islam there is something say part uh, obligatory or something that uh, you do will be seen if you not do it then you will be rewarded when you do it like salat hmm. salat uh, when you not do it you become seen and if you left it then you, you will be go to hell like that exactly there's anything in christianity like that no you see ma- you see the messiah he said from their fruits you shall know them and what the fruit of the messiah let us make it simple what the messiah really he want uh, uh, from us you as a muslim uh, you you learn that there is uh, things which is obligation and uh, uh, if you do them those will take you uh, to, he- to to heaven the Messiah, he don't want you to do things for him. He don't want you. He don't need you. This is God. This is initial proof that the Messiah is God. Okay, what the Messiah he want from us exactly? The Messiah, he said, as an example, if we go to Matthew chapter 25. Let me open the Bible and okay. see together what the Messiah is saying. I want you to listen to this chapter, if you don't mind. It's not really, I mean, uh, it's just to show you what the Messiah really want from us. Because, you know, uh, uh, the obligation which God he want from man is not about him. It's about the man himself, the benefit of the man. God he is, you see the Messiah, he came, I, I'm saying to you, I'm your servant. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because the, the, my best example is the Messiah. He washed the feet of his followers. Imagine, this person, he is their God. And yet he insists, he told them, if you don't let me wash your feet, you don't belong to me. I don't know you. All right? So the Messiah, he doesn't matter. So what the Messiah he want from you to make you go to heaven have nothing to do with the teaching of Islam, period. He wants you to be a person who is the fruit of God. And the fruit of God appear in your act and your work by loving others. So I'm going to play the, the gospel for you. Let me do it. And I will, okay. I, I will escape some part of the chapter so to make it short for you. Let us see. Okay. Matthew 25 An good and faithful servant which had received the one talent came and said Lord I knew thee that thou art an hard man weeping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not stored and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast that as thine his Lord answered and said unto him Thou wicked and slothful servant Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not stored. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye profitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? 
or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. I mean, what do you think? This is what the Lord He wants from you. Your prayer doesn't count really unless it is, you know, uh, 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 a person who follows His teaching. What is His teaching? I was angry and you feed me. But who is the angry? They said to Him, But when will you feed you? He said, When you do it to somebody, He needs food, you do it to me. When you do it to somebody who is sick, you do it to me. When you go to somebody, he is in prison, you are doing it to me. So Jesus does not want one from you. He don't, He is God. He do not get any benefit from you. What he wants, the message of Christ is, be loving, giving, be human. Love each other. This is what I want from you. You want to come to my house? You want to be in my kingdom? You have to be qualified. What is the qualification? Feed the hungry. Not me. I'm not hungry. I'm God. Feed the one who is sick, not me. I am a person who live eternal life. I'm God. Visit the one who is in prison. Dress, close the naked. Take in the stranger. If you do it, all those things, you do it to me. So my friend, do you see what Jesus wants from you? Yes. It seems not, nothing like Islam that will become sin if we do, we do not do uh, salat uh, like that God don't don't need anything for me exactly Islam is a religion of because Islam is a stupid uh, uh, ritual religion ritual it's based on ritual so there is no haram like like in Muslim there is oh, I think pig is haram in Islam there is any in Christianity food that becoming my, my, I just told you the haram the haram is not the food going inside your mouth it's your heart thinking bad acting bad doing bad the rest will not make you good in the old testament it's forbidden for a person to eat pork as an example but this is the reason because pigs they this is for health reason this is not about god for health reason until now actually even science proved that pork is not really healthy because if you eat too much of it you know there's animals who because there's some animals they they don't uh, sweat right this is one of the reason but in the time of uh, uh, of the jews pigs they grow and they eat whatever they want they, they are not like now and they are in farms we know exactly what they are eating so at that time they eat even dead bodies dead animals and they can bring diseases like now here we go the chinese they start eating pat and look what happened right so uh, there's there's animals but but this is not only for pigs we have to be uh, uh, honest too i mean there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a the, the mad cow disease there's a flu disease the, the bird flu disease but when it's come to the pig the pig can be uh, a, like an animal because it's eat whatever it is dead it can be dangerous unless you are monitoring this pig and you are farming him which means he have a fence and then inside the fence he eat then you know what he is eating but he might be a, 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 a he ate a man, a human. You don't want to eat a, an animal eating a human, right? So there is a reason for not to eat that, but not because it have to do with God. <laughs> God, you know, all those command is for your benefit, not for the benefit of God. As an example, even Sabbath. You know that the Jews are forbidden to work in Sabbath, right? Right. Okay, but Jesus, he uh, uh, he taught the Jews 
that Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. And look how amazing this statement is. When I when when Jesus said the Sabbath was made for the man, that's mean God. He don't want even the Sabbath is not for him. He don't care really for the Sabbath you are making it a big deal that because you are you are obeying my command now not to work in Sabbath the Sabbath was made for you because you are greedy you don't want to take a vacation you force your servant to work seven seven days a week you never give them a break so Sabbath was made for you not for me God do not need Sabbath you know so when the Messiah in Mark chapter 2 verse number 20 27 he said Sabbath was made for the man, not man made for the Sabbath. That is a clear understanding of the teaching of Christ. That all the command of God was for our benefit, not for his. He do not need anything. You know what I mean? Yes. And that including food, practice, prayer, this is for your benefit, not for me. I got nothing from it. If you pray to me, what I got nothing. I'm God anyway. You know what I mean? Yes. So just to make sure, if I don't go to the church on Sunday, it will not become sin. But no, no, I it's not sin. No, no, you don't even. Right? No, it's better to to it, for us the church, it, like we 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 join the family, uh, the Christian family. I mean here, because now you will have bigger family. Uh, you learn more about the gospel. There is people who they are teaching you, etc. But it's not what make you Christian is going to the church, is acting as one. You know what I mean? So, so the, the, go that, that doesn't become sin if I don't go to the no, church. No, no, no. That, that that will not make you sin. Who who said so? Nobody. No, this is not true. You know, church. The church in Christianity is not a building. Church is us, me and you. Now we are a church. If you are if you are a Christian now, and we are speaking about Jesus, that is a church. Jesus and Messiah said, "Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them," which means I will be the third, proving that he is God again. They say to you, where Jesus is, I'm God. How every two mention my name, I will be between them. So the church is not a building like Muslims. The church is believers. So you, a brother of yours, sit together, talk about the gospel of Jesus the Christ, the Lord, the Savior. That is a church. I see, I see. What else? Do you have any more? Okay, the conversation was very fun. I'm pleased. Thank you, CP. But I'm sorry, I can convert now. I am not one of those who can learn quickly. So give me some time. No, I no. I don't want you to convert. Today. You see, you got me wrong. I, I don't want you to convert. You see? Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I hope we can continue uh, conversation later. Yeah, Can no problem. Please? No problem. But I don't want you to convert. Finally, I don't want you to convert. I was asking you to accept the Messiah as your Savior. This is not convert. You know, we don't believe in this. We believe in relationship with God, not just a change in, I mean, religion. That's not Christianity. We are following the true God, my friend. We are not changing. There's only one God. So, my friend, don't don't accept yes. the Messiah unless you believe. We are not hypocrite. We don't believe in, in Shahada. This is garbage. I want you from your heart to be a believer. Saying things is not convincing for you or accepting things is not fully convincing or occupying your heart is not right. So don't say it unless you believe it. Okay. So I encourage you not okay, to accept the Messiah. I encourage you. I encourage you not to accept the Messiah unless you are fully in your heart became a believer. It's hard to, to accepting now. I want to learn about Christianity first. But finally, I want to ask prayer from everyone. Maybe there is many Christian uh, see this YouTube can pray for me. I heard that some there is some someone has met Jesus. I hope. We lost you. Oh, we lost his voice. <coughs> I 
Are you there? Mm, do you have a bad connection? Hello? <coughs> Hello? All right, we heard him saying that, you know, he hoped that we will pray for him. So I encourage reading. Yeah, if you please. <laughs> yeah, we lost you. Can you go ahead again? Because you were saying you uh, you saw somebody saw Jesus. From there, we lost you. We lost your voice after mm. after you said somebody saw oh, Jesus. My, sorry, my connection is bad. It's okay. So you said you want us okay. to pray for you. Wait, wait a second. I need. Oh, my connection is lost. Okay, can you hear now? Yeah, I hear you. So you said you want can the you, you wish the Christian to pray for you. What else you want to say? Yes. Pray for me. Is it okay? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Pray I, for I, me that I can meet Jesus. Uh, that I can meet Jesus, uh, so I can accept Jesus as my savior. And yes, I want to say thanks, and I hope you don't mind if I call you later and sure, sure, chat with you again, CP. Sure, I welcome any time to call me my friend. May the Lord bless you. I pray to the Lord in front of everybody. I pray to the Lord, to the Savior, the Messiah, His glory, His holiness, to touch this man and to make him accept him, to open the doors of heaven to him and his family and his people. We love all the Indonesian people, not only him. All of you be loved by the Messiah. The Lord said, that the Father, for He loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son to save them, not to because He hated them, because He loved them. So the reason for the Messiah to come, only because He loves us. There is no other need for Him. He do not need us. We need Him. So my friend, I pray. I pray that your needs will be answered. Your request will be done. I pray that the Lord, He hear your voice. Lord, our Messiah, our Savior, save this person give him the light and make him see what he could not see by my explanation Amen. i am your servant lord i could maybe do could not do it but you can do it better than me for sure and the lord may he open your eyes thank you so much CP. thank good you night. thank you goodbye bye-bye <laughs>